Hey guys today I will be starting a new series, however before that, I would like to thank you guys for nearly reaching 100 subscribers. I started this channel because I was bored and wanted an entertaining way to waste my time so I never expected to any subscribers at all, so thank you. With all that being said let's begin. I know what some of you may be screaming at your screens by now, have you not read the manga or even watched the anime, Eren does have the founding titan. Well I have and what I really mean is what if Eren had his very own founding titan, not the founding titan that belongs to the royal Fritz titan but one which only he can command. That day, the human race remembered the terror of being dominated by them, and the shame of being held captive in a bird cage. Over 100 years ago, a natural predator of humanity appeared, the titans, giant humanoid but mindless monsters whose sole purpose of existence seemed to be to devour humans. There was an insurmountable gap in power between them and mankind, and as a result, humanity was rapidly exterminated to the brink of extinction. The survivors responded by constructing three concentric walls, Wall Maria, Wall Rose and Wall Cena, which graced them with a century of peace, however peace never lasts and it humanity is due a lot of pain and suffering. One day while slacking off like usual while picking firewood for the family with Mikasa, Eren fall asleep at the base of a tree and has a strange dream. There was a field of beautiful blue flowers, not too dissimilar to those nearby, then a splash of blood followed by a flash of a titan with its mouth open as if it was going to eat someone, then darkness with blood falling like rain, then the corpse of a core member hitting the ground, followed by the sudden appearance of titans near a windmill, then switching to the room of some sort of royal or noble, then back to the rotting corpses of the survey core and more blood spewing everywhere. Then finally a smiling titan picking up someone who looks like his mother out of the rubble of a house. Seeing this Eren wakes up scared from the dream crying, pushing back on the tree with a lot of force, when suddenly the ground behind him and the tree opened up as Eren fell down the cavern into a pool of water, now bleeding with a few broken bones from the fall. Unable to breath, Eren desperately holds his breath as his eyes dart around to find an exit, but there was none. Eren then comes to terms with his death and prepares to stop resisting when he sees a strange blowing spinal cord looking insect, the Hallucinogenia. Unable to move away or resist, the strange creature attached itself to Eren's spine, when out of nowhere there was a massive bolt of yellow beam lightning which branched off in all directions like a tree, absolutely toppling the tree he fell in and pushing Mikasa down the hill, as a 420 meter tall titan emerges, large enough to step over the wall with ease, why 420 meters, because it is funny that's why. Suddenly panic fills the streets of Shigan China, as the citizens believe there was a breach in the walls as everyone rushes to evacuate. Back at the house, Grisha recognizes the lightning as that of a titan shifter, believing Molly has arrived to steal the founding titan. Realizing the lighting came from the direction Mikasa and Eren was in, Grisha tells Carla to evacuate while he collects the kids, rushing off to the site of the lightning. However, by the time Grisha, Mikasa and the military arrive, the titan body had already vanished and all that was there was a confused Eren with some strange marks on his face, which Grisha instantly recognized. Grisha then thanks the garrison regiment for protecting Mikasa and Eren, despite them not doing anything at all, then rushing off with the two homes, where they would wait for Carla to return. After a while, Armin arrived to check on Eren and Mikasa, then Carla finally returned as she hugged her babies and Grisha asking them if they were okay but Eren simply says, you probably won't believe this but that titan was me. Hearing this Carla scolds the child for lying telling him that he shouldn't joke about such things as the titans are evil and have killed thousands. However. Before she could continue her lecture Grisha cuts her off telling her that he believes Eren is telling the truth, mentioning the titan marks Eren had under his eyes, then grabbing a knife stabbing himself in the hand which shocks everyone as they think he has gone crazy, however Grisha shows the transformation sparks, then explaining that he is can do something similar to Eren however much weaker, as steam appears from the wound as it disappears. Now that everyone believes them Grisha asks Eren how he got the powers of the titan without becoming a pure titan and eating a titan shifter, as that is the only way to do so unless you're Yamafritz. Eren then explains his dream and how he made contact with a strange glowing organism, hearing this Grisha deduces that this must be the same method Yama used to become a titan, not a deal to the devil or make contact with the origin of life. Grisha tells Eren to get some rest then telling him that when he wakes up he will let him in on what he has been doing in the cellar, also because Eren is already a founder, Grisha doesn't go on his trip to the rice chapel to steal the fonda so instead goes to the basement to prepare the books and write down Eren's story. When Eren fell asleep, he appeared in a mysterious land covered with endless blue sand and two beautiful intertwined trees made from energy. Eren then saw two people, Frida and Yuma 
deciding to ask them where he was but Yuma did not reply so he looked at Frida Rice. She explained that he was in the paths, where all subjects of Yuma are connected. Confused as to how Aaron got there, Frida asked him how he got there. So Aaron pointed to the second coordinate paths tree saying I appeared there when I went to sleep. Then asking is this a dream or is it a power of the founding titan I just got. Even more perplexed than before Frida asked what he meant by founding titan so Aaron explained what happened today and what his dad told him. Now that they both understood why they were here, Aaron said so you are like me but who is she pointing at the Yuma who was on her knees bowing her head, waiting for an order, so Frida tells him her name is Yuma Fritz and she was the first titan. Aaron then replies that he guessed that much, what he meant was why is she acting like she has no free will to which Frida says she doesn't, she is a slave to the royal family who died 2000 years ago yet still serves them. This enrages Aaron as he shouts that everyone is free from even before their first breath and even after their last breath as there is no point living like cattle without any thoughts of your own, then hugging Yuma telling her you are no slave, you are no god, you're just a person, you don't need to serve anyone, you can be the one to choose. Hearing this Yuma begins to cry saying I can choose, as her eyes finally open revealing her eyes for the first ever time since being enslaved by the first king. Aaron then tells Yuma that she is free but he has to go as he can feel something shaking his body as he returned to the real world. When he awoke the city was once again in chaos as the colossal titan and armored titan had smashed the gates down allowing the titans to breach the city. Aaron looked behind himself as his father was pulling both of them out of the rubble which was once their home to see a titan towering over them with a massive bloodthirsty grin, but not just any titan. To Grisha's shock it was his ex-wife Dina Fritz. Before it could take another step Aaron yelled stop, stopping all titans in or around Shigan Shina, then yelling kneel as they all do that as well. Aaron then tell his father to help mother out while he kills the titan, however Grisha pulls him back explaining that. The titan in front of them is his ex-wife and he has only a few months left to live due to the curse of Yuma so he has decided to let Dina eat him and inherit his titan shifter, therefore becoming human again. Before jumping into Dina's mouth he told Carla and Aaron to take care of her for him and that everything will be explained in the basement, goodbye I love you both deeply, don't forget that only you can save humanity Aaron, giving him the key. Then being devoured by Dina who reverts to human confused as to what's going on, however she calms down when she sees Aaron, as her vision is still blurry so she mistakes him for Grisha, saying I love you Grisha, I told you I would find you again, then collapsing to the ground due to inheriting one of the nine. Meanwhile all the soldiers are shocked as to why all the titans are not moving and prepares to kill them while they are distracted, however just before they can do that, they suddenly start running away back into titan territory beyond the walls as Aaron yelled for them to through the paths. Aaron then goes to the gate and uses the Warhammer's Titan hardening to create a new wall in place of the outer gate, sealing it shut, leaving a small 1 meter by 1 meter gap, big enough for the scouts to return through but too small for Titans to get through. After a few hours, the city was stated as clear of Titans so the refugees can finally return home. At the same time, Dina finally woke up and Amin had returned from the evacuation location. When Dina had was finally able to move again, Aaron explained that there is a secret in the basement that should explain everything. Eventually they find the drawer with the false bottom, discovering the books and the secret of humanity. After reading them and giving some time for it to all sink in, Dina asks where Grisha is right now and when he will be home. However, when she says that she quickly realized what had happened as everyone's smiles turned into frowns and tears rolled down their cheeks as Aaron explained how Grisha only had a few months left to live at best so decided to sacrifice himself to save her. Once she calmed down again, she asks Aaron how he made all the titans leave asking if Grisha really stole the founder from the royal family. Aaron then explained what transpired earlier on that day and how he became the second founding titan. Realizing Eren is the founder and therefore his capabilities she asks if he can access the paths to communicate with other subjects of Yuma. Which Eren confirms by speaking to her without opening his mouth. Happy she then begs Eren to allow her to talk to Zeke which he accepts, bringing her to the paths then bringing Zeke there as well. Seeing his mother again Zeke falls the ground clutching his head repeating how could this happen, that mother is still alive, however he is swiftly stopped as he is caught off guard by a sudden hug and apology where she tells Zeke that she and Grisha still love him despite him giving them to Molly, as it was the right choice, as it allowed us to realize our mistake, we saw you as a tool and not a son, we're sorry we wished we played with you more. After Zeke and Dina finish bonding, Zeke realizes he isn't where he was before asking where he is and finally noticing Aaron asking who he is. 
Dina was about to explain but Eren cut him off telling Zeke that he is his half-brother Eren Yeager and they are in the Paths dimension, and before you ask, I am not the founder, I am just good friends with them so they allowed us to communicate. Zeke then asks where they are in the real world with Eren informing him they are in Paradis, in Shigan China which is a outlier district in the south of Wall Maria. The same place your little warrior buddies just attacked, but luckily, they didn't manage to kill anyone other than Dad due to the founder intervening. Eren then threatens Zeke telling him that if he dares tell Molly he will rumble him and Molly to dust. Dina then explains her plan for Zeke to betray Molly and live with them in Paradis together. Basically, he tells Molly that he believes that Armored, Colossal, Female and Jaw Titans are not enough to beat Paradis, and if there is no reply from them in over five years, they should send him, as well as some Eldians to become pure Titans to fight for you. Then once you are here just simply look for us. Will Zeke agree to this plan or will he stick with Molly until he dies? Okay this is the end of the video thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed, if so please don't forget to like and subscribe as we are so close to 100 subscribers. This has been Demonic Saiyan saying bye.